So we discussed what the definition of a conservative vector field is. And it's one where you could basically write it as the gradient of some scalar function phi. Okay? Now phi is called the potential. Okay? This is called the potential function of the vector field F. And uh, we also knew how to test the vector field. You take a look at the curl on a connected and simply correct con connected domain and if it equals zero then uh, everywhere in that domain you could write the vector field as the gradient of this scalar of this potential. Okay? And now the next question in our mind should be well how do we, how do we find that potential? If we are given a vector field how can we get the potential for that vector field? So uh, let's take a look at this example here. Uh, we have uh, the vector field F, which we tested and we know is conservative. Okay, and so we know we can do this. We know we could write it as some uh, gradient of phi. Well, if we can, then on the left-hand side, this is given as F, and on the right-hand side, this is just an expression of the conservative nature of the vector field. And so we have a vector equation. This should equal that, and this should equal that. And so we get these two equations right here. And now we could either start with equation 1 or 2. Let's go ahead and start with 1. Now I'm going to take 1 and I'm going to integrate it. Okay, I'm going to integrate equation 1 on both sides by dx. Okay, so I'm going to do this integral that I'm circling right here. Okay, and now we have to be careful a little because we actually didn't define what that means. What does it mean when you take the integral of a partial derivative with respect to x, uh, doing it with respect to, to, to dx? Okay, and here you're asking a question. Okay, the answer to this is that you're asking this question What is the most general phi that I can get such that when I take the partial derivative with respect to x of it, I get back this. Okay, so this is the formal meaning of that that symbolism, that that formalism that you see there. You're asking for what phi can you take such that when you take the partial derivative of x with respect to phi, and we want the most general one. So how do we do this? Well, just treat y as a constant. Okay. You're going to treat y as a constant as you're integrating over dx. And if you do that, the integral of ex with respect to dx is just ex. And so that's where that's coming from. And cosine y just comes along for the ride. But now we get this very special extra thing, okay? It's, this is not a constant, okay? In Calc 2, you might have used this as a, as a sort of constant, uh, which is a real number. Here, this is, if you want, constant in quote marks. This is actually depends on y. This is a function of y. Now, why could that be? Why, why are we leaving some function with respect to y there? Well, here's why. Take the partial derivative of that expression right there with respect to x. So you have ex cosine y plus cy. What is that going to give you when you do that? You'll get ex cosine y, okay, because y comes along for the right plus zero. Why zero? Well, that's the partial derivative with respect to uh, x of this function that only depends on y. Whatever the dependence on y is going to be, the partial derivative with respect to x of it will be zero. And hence, you satisfy equation one. And so the most general type of function that you could come up with that will satisfy equation one is this and that's what the meaning of this integral means and now we could have also started out with equation 2 and integrated uh, but um, you know there you just choose which, whichever is easiest here we started with 1 alright so 1 equation 1 gives us a phi we have the potential from equation 1 okay here it is but can we do better okay and we can if we use equation 2 alright this is just telling us, you know, your phi is this with some arbitrary function of y. Now let's plug it into 2 
and see if we could try to resolve even greater what the CY is. Okay, so we're going to plug it into 2, and here's what that means. When you're plugging it into 2, this means you're going to take the result of 1, which is this phi right here, and plug it into equation 2 here on the left-hand side. Okay, and you're going to set that equal to the right-hand side of equation 2. Doing that, so taking the result of 1, taking the partial derivative with respect to y, we get these cancellations of x, and we're left with this differential equation right there. Okay? Now, now this equation is going to allow us to resolve, you know, even more what, what phi is by finding out what cy is. So we integrate cy, and if you integrate cy, the most general type of function, c, that will satisfy this equation is some constant. So we resolved even greater what cy is, and now thanks to step 2, we could write phi as equal to ex cosine y plus cy, where cy now is just some constant. Now, this constant, you could set it equal to uh, whatever you want, uh, or you could just leave it as constant, but it's a real constant, okay? Real number. This is a real number, so it's in the, in, in the real number. It's not... Uh, the it's not like cy up there which was a function okay